Hi, this is Jeff Klein, editor of Radiographics, and this video is an effort on behalf of the RSNA and the journal Radiographics to bring to your attention the online education features offered in the journal, uh, particularly at this most difficult time when we're all looking for uh, online resources to aid in our education, and those members in training are looking to support their efforts in residency training, I thought this video would be helpful to highlight the online features that one can access uh, in the journal. So we're going to go through a number of different aspects of the journal. We'll begin with the CME content that Radiographics offers. As you probably know, each issue of the journal offers 16 or 17 articles, all of which offer self-assessment CME credit. If you look at the content of the journal, you'll see that this spans a variety of different topics. Obviously, we cover all of the different diagnostics of specialties, but we also offer reviews in radiation oncology, non-interpretive skills, medical physics, and informatics papers. And here on the right, you can see the journal homepage with a list of the most recently published articles that have been published online over the course of the last several weeks. If you wish to complete a CME exercise, you can do this in one of several ways. Here you can see a list of articles in the March-April 2019 issue of the journal, and you'll see that there is a CME choice listed with each article. If you click on that, or you can click on the CME tab when looking at a single article, as you'll see here, Let's say I want to do a CME test for an article here on abbreviated MRI protocols of the abdomen. I'll choose that, and again, you'll see the CME tab. If you launch that, it will bring you to the RSNA's online learning center. And the learning center will allow you to launch the exam. This brings you to the overview of the article with learning objectives. It'll also give you access to the full text article in the Learning Center. You can see here, and I'm reading it. And then after I'm done, I can either print the CME test, as you can see here. There's five questions in each CME test. If I wish to complete this hard copy and then go back online, or I can launch the CME test here and answer the questions based on the article and submit the answers. And this is the way you can achieve CME credit for any article in the journal. In addition to reading full text articles, many of our published articles contain associated slide presentations. You'll see here a list of articles which appear in the November December 2019 issue, and you'll notice here under CT colonography it'll say slide presentation. And so you can click on that, and what will happen is it will launch the presentation. You can download that presentation is a PowerPoint, or you can go to full screen and actually view the slide set that is associated with that full text article, as you see here. In addition to our standard educational reviews, we also publish the articles authored by the faculty of the American Institute for Radiologic Pathology. And you can see here on the right is an example of one of our more recent AIRP papers, which is a GI paper from Dr. Maria Manning which was published in the January-February 2020 issue on gastroesophageal reflux disease. And you'll see these articles in all of the six listed subspecialty areas appearing regularly uh, within the journal. The next feature I want to highlight are the radiographics podcasts. Those can be found here on the home page. You'll notice there's a box here. If I click on that, it will bring up the most recent podcast, which you can listen to or you can access the list of podcasts that we have conducted over the last six years. These podcasts are comprised of three types. The first are video podcasts where we interview the author of a current article, as you'll see here. Uh, this is a podcast that I conducted with Dr. Sahani from, at the time, Massachusetts General Hospital, who was one of the co-authors of a paper, again, on abbreviated MRI protocols of the abdomen and these occur uh, two in each issue. So there's two author interviews in each issue. The second type of podcast are my review 
of this a article current article. explores the use of quantitative imaging biomarkers extracted from chest CT studies. The article begins by describing biomarkers as measurable objective characteristics derived from images that can be used to assess normal biologic or pathologic processes. So as you can see, explores the use of so as you can see, the third type of podcast are the audio summary podcasts. This is where in about a 20 or 25 minute podcast, and again, there are two of these per issue, I will review six articles in each of the two podcasts. And so basically you can access these through a variety of different channels. You'll see here, Apple Podcasts, Google Play or Spotify, you can use to subscribe, or you can listen to these directly on the journal homepage. And again, each article will be about a two or three minute review. So in total, these podcasts last about 20 to 25 minutes in length. And you can, if you don't want to listen to the podcast, you can actually get a printout of the text of each of my podcasts uh, in lieu of listening to the audio files. And here you can see on Spotify on the right, I can actually subscribe or play these through my Spotify account and be notified when the new podcasts are released, uh, usually a new one every two weeks. Let's move on to the resources for members in training or our resident and fellow members. And this can be found under the core learning tab of the journal homepage as seen here. When we click on that, you'll notice there are four resources available. We'll start with the radiographics fundamentals. Radiographics fundamentals are slide presentations that are solicited from the annual RSNA meeting education exhibits of which, as you know, there are more than 2,000 presented at each annual meeting. These are specifically geared towards our residents. Again, they can be found in the core learning section of the home page. And under the Radiographics Fundamentals tab, you will see a list of these organized by subspecialty. These are fully peer reviewed and edited, and they're published online. You can view them on the journal page, or you can download these to view offline if you so wish. And in addition, there are extended abstracts that are presented in print form in the print version of the journal. So once you've clicked on the Fundamentals tab, this brings you to the Fundamentals page. And in here's how to search for content uh, within the Fundamentals uh, group of interactive presentations. You can search by topic, as you'll see here. I'm going to choose, again, the Fundamentals tab under the Core Learning tab. And this will bring up the list of fundamentals presentations. They're sorted by date by default, the most recent being at the top. But you can see here, I can go by topic. And so in this example, I'm going to look at gastrointestinal radiology presentations. And then I could even further search by additional terms, for example, magnetic resonance. And then this will bring up a series of presentations with the applied filters. The next component of the core learning section is that all of our content, whether manuscripts printed in the print journal or these online presentations I just illustrated, are indexed according to the American Board of Radiology study guides for the various diagnostic subspecialties. So here you'll see that, again, this is from the American Board of Radiology. As you note, there are 14 core exam blueprints that they publish that help residents prepare for their core exam administered at 36 months of training. And they're organized according to these categories. We have, in turn, taken all of the journal content and similarly organized it according to the core exam blueprints. So what you'll see in the journal, again, under the core learning tab, is you will see that there is a ABR core exam blueprint article index. This index is organized again by the same categories. And you'll see here's the series of topics or indices. You'll notice an RG next to those that have that have a new article or presentation in the current issue that has been applied to one of these indices. In addition to 
organization of journal content by diagnostic subspecialties, there is also a non-interpretive skills index that we've created, again, according to the American Board of Radiology Study Guide. This does not actually appear currently under the Radiographics Core Learning tab, but occurs under the tab for collections, as seen here. So if you go to the Collections tab, you will see two series of collections. One is the monograph issues that have been published over the last 20 plus years, and then the non-interpretive skills index. If you choose that, it will bring you again to an index in which all the journal content related to non-interpretive skills has been organized into one of nine areas, uh, again, according to the American Board of Radiology non-interpretive skills study guide. So you can find access to all the non-interpretive skills content that the journal has published within this index. In addition, there is a medical physics index. Again, this is found under the core learning tab. And again, we've coordinated with the American Association of Physicists in Medicine to utilize their index that they've created for uh, physics residents to organize all of our physics content in radiographics according to the index that is used for the physics curriculum for medical physics residents. So you'll see it again here under the core learning tab. If we choose that AAPM physics curriculum article index as seen here, again, it will bring you to a series of 11 areas, medical physics, in which all of our content can be found organized according to this index. And finally, we've created an on-call preparation index. Again, this is found under the Core Learning tab. Any article or presentation that is published in Radiographics that we think would be appropriate for call preparation or for performance of a resident on call will be organized in this particular section. You'll see it again here under the Core Learning tab. If I choose the on-call preparation article index, it will bring me to one of a series of indices in all of the various subspecialties, including non-interpretive skills, where you can find content that will help you with your call responsibilities. So you see here, I'm um, coming in on one particular area here, which is ultrasound. And you can see here's a series of articles or presentations that we think would be appropriate for someone encountering an ultrasound issue when on call. And you can see this is one of the ones I've chosen just for illustrative purposes. This is how to perform an ultrasound exam, real basic presentation, which I think takes a first year resident in particular through the process of choosing the proper transducer for the exam that's been requested and understanding how the machines work, how to set the screen display parameters, and then a variety of different tips on image acquisition and saving cine loops and information. Finally, the journal does feature something called Education Corner. This is a series of editorials that has been organized by Dr. Omer Awan from the University of Maryland. And these are opinion pieces that he and colleagues and residents that he works with have created that address issues related to radiology resident education. You can see here's actually the most recent one in the current March-April 2020 issue which addresses the issue of the oral board examination and, and poses the question as to whether we've really done trainees a disservice by eliminating this. As you know, this was eliminated a number of years ago, and we've moved to an uh, online examination. In fact, the first radiographics Twitter chat related to this particular editorial will be held on Monday, April 13th from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I would encourage you to join in on the Twitter chat where Dr. Awan, with a series of experts throughout the country, will address this particular editorial and the issues that it raises related to the elimination of the American Board of Radiology oral board examination. So with that, I think I've tried to summarize the various educational features that are available in Radiographics Online. We're trying to meet our members' CME needs, obviously, and very importantly, for those members in training that are now looking at online and remote learning for their training for the foreseeable future, we wanted to point out those resources available in Radiographics Online that will help our residents and fellows as well as program directors 
and all practicing radiologists who are involved in residency training. We hope that we'll be able to use these resources in support of educating our future radiologists. Thank you very much and take care.